pleasure to be here, and I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. And uh, my talk will be mainly based uh, on uh, a joint work with uh, my colleague on YouTube. I want to see how it works. <laughs> okay, okay. So, what I would like to do during this uh, this uh, first hour is uh, to give you a broad view of uh, minfield game and uh, tell you the material I plan to cover in the next uh, few hours. So, I am going to start with uh, a toy problem before I state the general problem. So, let me start with the data. I have a game of n player, so let me take n greater than or equal to 2 an integer, and uh, the, gra the game uh, will happen during a time interval of zero capital T. And uh, since I am talking about uh, a toy problem, I am going to choose uh, F, take a smooth function, and H, not H, L, take two small function on the torus. So by this, I mean that they are small function on Rd, and they are periodic. And uh, here is the problem one. I want to find a function v1 all the way up to vn from 0t cross the torus to the power n. So this is the d-dimensional torus, and I will write this as a td to the n into r, such that the time derivative of uh, vi at the tx, so here x, is uh, x1 fn is in td cross td n time. Plus 1 half the gradient with respect to si of uh, vi of dx square plus 1 divided by n minus 1, the sum g is not i of uh, f of si minus sj. Minus h bar square over 2. So here I forget to say that I'm giving h bar greater than 0. I am using h bar to call it a Planck constant because in some 
problem, he plays the role of the Planck constant. The Laplacian, the sum j from 1 to n, the Laplacian with respect to sk of vi of t x plus the sum j is not i, the gradient sj vj of tx in a product the gradient sj vi of tx equal to zero under the condition that uh, vi at time zero x is uh, 1 over n minus 1, the sum j is not i, L of sj minus si. So I want to solve uh, this uh, equation on uh, 0 t cross tg over n. And this initial condition hold on Tg over n. So this is a system of uh, parabolic equation, which uh, is uh, uh, well studied and for which you have existence of uh, a solution. So here, V, of course, depend on n if I let n vary. So I am going to write uh, V, n, V, i is, in fact, depend on n. Because later, I am going to let uh, n go to infinity in this system. So let me give a name to this. This is a Hamilton-Jacobi equation with uh, n variables. So that problem, one can associate uh, a problem, another problem to it, which comes from uh, um, game theory. And uh, the new problem I am going to write, uh, I am going to use expresses in terms of Brownian motion and uh, such uh, expression which appear in probability. But you don't need to have any knowledge of uh, Brownian notion because uh, very quickly I am going to, I am going to work with a system of this form than working with a stochastic analog. So problem two. I assume I am given a data which is uh, st1, stn. This is a point in uh, Tg to the n. And uh, definition for alpha. 1 of Tx alpha n from 0 t cross Tg to the n into Rb. I am going to consider the stochastic differential equation. So let me take uh, B1, Bn, independent Brownian motion. And uh, I am saying you don't need to, if you didn't know what is a Brownian motion, you don't need to do know that because uh, very quickly I will stop working with this kind of uh, expression. Now, consider the differential equation, d t, v 
ds ts equal to alpha bt. So alpha is uh, alpha 1 up to alpha n. And x is uh, x1 up to sn. So plus square root of uh, h bar db, where b is uh, b1 dn. Under the initial condition that uh, s at time capital T is uh, little st. So I'm call this st. So I look at uh, this uh, stochastic differential equation. And for each alpha, I am going to construct x. So let me use the notation x is, in fact, a function which depend on time and which depend on alpha. So once I fix little st in an alpha, I call uh, the solution st. And I am going to associate uh, to S G I of uh, S T alpha. This is by definition the expectation, the integral from zero to T. S alpha I. alpha i square over 2 minus 1 over n minus 1. The sum j is not i of f s i minus s j d tau plus 1 over n minus 1, the sum j is not i of uh, L s i minus s i at time 0 minus s j time 0. So this is how I define uh, my j. And here is the problem. Can we find alpha star from 0t cross tb to the n into so here, I need to, to do this. Oh, no, it is correct, because I, I wrote uh, alpha 1 to alpha n. So can we find alpha star from, because alpha star is alpha star 1, alpha star 2, up to alpha star d, such that for every i, which is in 1 n, j i of st alpha star is less than j i of st alpha star 1. all the way up to 
alpha star i minus 1, alpha i, alpha star i plus 1, alpha star n. Okay, so let me explain what, uh, what uh, that is saying. I have a game with uh, n player. <coughs> and for each player, I define a function j i. But uh, j i depends on the strategy of all the players. And the question is, uh, is it possible to find a strategy such that uh, if one of the players so I, I find a joint strat a common strategy for all the n players. If one of the players changes its mind and decides to go in with a different strategy, he's going to pay a higher cost. So this is uh, an equilibrium problem. It is not a minimization problem because uh, I cannot minimize. If for each i, I minimize into alpha, I don't know if I will have a common alpha for all the all the i. So these two problems are related because if you have a, a smooth solution for the Hamilton-Jacobi above, then you can construct, you can write a alpha star explicitly in terms of the solution there. And so let me denote this by Ne. N. So Ne for Nash equilibrium and the subscript here is to say that uh, we have n players. So that was uh, the toy problem. Let me go with a more general setting. I am going to assume that I am giving a Hamiltonian. H defined from the torus cross RD into R. And I am given a Lagrangian L defined from the torus cross RD into R. And uh, these two functional are related by the fact that uh, if I take, uh, so H is a function of uh, Q and P, and L is a function of Q and V. If I take the gradient with respect to P of H at uh, Q, and I write the inverse, I am going to get uh, the gradient with respect to V, L, Q. So to make that uh, happen, I am going to say that for each p, q, l is uh, the Lejean transform of h. And uh, later, I am going to define a Lejean transform. But we can start uh, with uh, this relation, imposing that uh, l and h, l for each q fix, h for each q fix are convex, or even strictly convex. So now let us compare that to the toy problem. In the toy problem, L of Q V is V square over two, and H of Q P is P square over two. So this is uh, the toy problem. Now, I am going to consider my initial function, which is uh, u star defined from the torus cross Rd. The set of probability measure on the torus into R, where P of uh, Td is the set of probability measure 
on the toes. So what does uh, U star represent uh, there in the toy problem? U star of Q, mu. So if Q is an element of the torus and uh, mu is a probability measure, I write the convolution of uh, L by mu and uh, I apply that to Q. So I write the convolution of a function by a measure. My function is uh, of class uh, C infinity. Then uh, F convolution mu will give me a function of class infinity which depend on mu. And then I apply that function to Q. So if you take the measure in the toy problem, if, if you take a mu i to be 1 over n minus 1, the sum j is not i, delta sj, then uh, you see that uh, what I wrote uh, here is exactly u star applied to You can see that uh, this is uh, L convolution mu i applied to This will be some SJ, the sum J is not I. And uh, I have uh, a running cost. f, which is a function from the torus across the set of probability measure on the torus into r. And uh, in the toy problem, f of q mu is uh, f convolution mu applied to q. Now I am going to pause for a few minutes to make the change in the original equation instead of uh, writing that I'm just going to modify it. So I'm going to change this into H of SI, the gradient with respect to SI of VI. And uh, I am going to change uh, this. into the gradient with respect to P of H. I need more room. Gradient SJ. SJ. Gradient SJ. V. J. gradient SJ VI 
equal to 0. SK. Which one? This one or that one? This one. Yeah. SJ. SK. Yes. And then I am going to replace this. by F of uh, SI 1 over N minus 1 with some J is not I, delta SJ. And I am going to replace that by U star of uh, SI, 1 over N minus 1, with some J is not I, delta SJ. So this is uh, the general setting for the class of uh, main field game problem we are interested in. Any question? So now I am going to write a list of, uh, of problems. Some of them has been resolved and some of them have not been uh, resolved. Central problem. First question. Give a meaning to the Hamilton Jacobi equation when n equal to infinity. And uh, exclamation mark mean uh, we we know how to do that. No, I am going to back. I will say we know how to do that in certain cases. So this is when h bar is greater than 0. And uh, 
This is due to last week and Leon. Can we solve the Hamilton Jacobi equation, which I haven't written what it is when H is greater than zero? It means that under some condition we can solve it, but in general it remains an open problem. This is due to cardiac laget de la rue last week in Lyon. And this is still a preprint. Can we show that the limit when n goes to infinity of the Hamilton-Jacobi equation with n player is the Hamilton-Jacobi equation with infinitely many players when h is greater than 0? And uh, This is done in some cases by Cardiac de la Rue, Las Rue, and Lyon. Can we solve? Nash equilibrium problem, infinity, when h bar is greater than zero. And uh, the answer is, uh, this is uh, quite well understood. And uh, this is due to last week and Leon. Now let us look at the ca case uh, h uh, equal to 0. h bar equal to 0. This is uh, already known by last week. Can we solve the Hamilton-Jacobi equation when h bar equal to zero? This is due to my preference rule. And um, question mark because uh, we could start solve a short time. We could find only a short time solution and so a lot of work need to be done here. And uh, the proof of this and the proof of that, the method are completely different. And one can see that you cannot adapt the proof here, there, and you cannot adapt the proof there, here. There, they use uh, strongly that they are dealing with probability measure which are absolutely continuous with respect to Lebesgue measure. And here we use strongly that we are using probability measure which can allow Dirac mass. Can we solve uh, the Hamilton-Jacobi equation, prove that the limit when n goes to infinity is uh, the Hamilton-Jacobi equation in the infinity case? This is uh, completely open when h bar is 0. 
And the fourth question, as you can see, the, the fourth question is solved. When H bar is uh, zero. So my talk purpose of the lectures and so which means that I am focusing on a game which is uh, deterministic and uh, if you look uh, back uh, the stochastic differential equation it means that h bar equal to zero the Brownian motion does not appear and you are solving a uh, deterministic uh, differential equation So now let me make some comments. So this comment will allow us to develop uh, our intuition. So here are some issues to face. So look, this equation, I wrote it on 0t cross 2d to the n. And so the first issue to face is uh, what is the limit when n goes to infinity of uh, 2d to the n. Formally, at least, you can convince yourself that uh, if you take any non-atomic probability space L2, then uh, this limit is uh, that. So we have i, the player i go from 1 to n. We have infinitely many players. So I am going to replace the set uh, 1n by a set of probability measure. But I need to allow myself, my probability measure will be of this form. I need to allow myself uh, all possible probability measure. And uh, I am going to tell you later. So here, let us look at that from a very formal point of view, that uh, the limit of that in that some sense is this. And later, we are going to make that uh, more, this statement more accurate. However, this space is not compact. And so if you take a sequence of function in this space and you let uh, n go to infinity, uh, there is not much you can say about uh, the limiting function. Therefore, that uh, will explain the question mark uh, I wrote uh, here. Instead uh, of trying to study this equation for very general initial condition, I am going to focus on some particular initial conditions which are permutation invariant with respect to the n minus 1 variable. So here is a cure. Let uh, Pn be 
the set of permutation. of n letters. Instead of the limit when n goes to infinity td to the n, we'll compute the limit when n goes to infinity of uh, Td to the n divided by the set of permutation of n letters. Now, what is this space, the set of permutation of n letters? Td to the n divided by the set of permutation of n letters is nothing but 1 over n, the sum j from 1 to n, delta sj, such that s1, sn, is in the torus. Right. You can write uh, explicitly a one-to-one -one relation between this set and that set. Therefore, the limits when n goes to infinity of td to the n divided by the set of permutation of n later is nothing but the set of probability measure on Td. Now se this set is compact. So here is uh, what I am saying I can make uh, rigorous. I can prove that uh, the set of probability measure on the torus is L2 of 0, 1 to the d on the torus, quotiented by an equivalent relation. So we can find an explicit uh, equivalent relation which will be consistent with our problem so that if I quotient this set by that equivalent relation, I get the set of probability measure. And you can guess how this is going to happen. I need to write an infinite dimensional version of the set of permutation. And the infinity infinite dimensional version of the set of permutation is the set of le measure, preser measure, measure preserving le Lebesgue map. So the map from uh, the cube, the d-dimensional cube to the d-dimensional cube, which preserve uh, Lebesgue measure. So now, a second issue we'll face, I can erase this. Remark. At time zero, if you look at uh, the i of zero, x one, s n, this is uh, of the form the i of uh, S i, S one to S i minus one, S i plus one, S n, and uh, this part is a permutation invariant. So it means that uh, I am not just taking any arbitrary initial condition. I am taking initial conditions satisfying some special property. And so my intention is not to study the analog of uh, the, Hamilton, the infinite dimensional Hamilton-Jacobi equation for any arbitrary function, 
but to study data with a function whose initial value has this specific structure. And when n go to infinity, so first, when I do this, I need to prove that for n fixed, when the time become positive, my solution preserve this structure. And then when n go to infinity, I am going to look for a solution which also preserve this structure. Another observation, the running costs. also satisfy the bus structure. So now let me make what will what I will call a postulate, but uh, if you do some computation it be, it become very natural to make that uh, assumption. On the, the above assumption, we expect that the i n of t x is of the form Vn of T Si, 1 over n minus 1, the sum J dot I delta Sj. So the solution of the hamilton jacobi equation consists of n function, V1 to Vn. But uh, this function, I have written them for the parameter n fixed. And I am making the postulate that uh, there is a function Vn which is independent of i, and that allows me to construct Vin in this order. Once you plot that into your original equation, it gives you an equation for Vn. And uh, this is going what is going to inspire you to write uh, the equation, hamilton jacobi equation in the infinity case. So what I want to stress is uh, if you try to write the Hamilton-Jacobi equation for any arbitrary initial condition, any arbitrary running cost, I have no idea what you will be able to get or if you will get something meaningful. However, if you impose this uh, additional condition that you are looking for some special solution, you will be able to write the infinite dimensional Hamilton-Jacobi equation. So when you look at uh, all these uh, miracles which you are, you are imposing to appear, it looks very strange. But uh, if you didn't know about mean field game and uh, you were just looking at Hamilton-Jacobi equation, all these things come in a very natural way. You don't, you don't need to impose this assumption and you see that they come in a very natural way. So I hope, I hope that uh, during this, uh, the next four hours, we are going to consider a problem. We are not going to make any of these assumptions, and you will see that uh, you will look at a very natural Hamilton-Jacobi equation, and this is what is going to happen. So I am going to end by one hour means 60 minutes or 50 minutes? 60 minutes. 60 minutes. Okay. So I am going to write the infinite dimension of Hamilton Jacobi equation. I am, for the moment, I don't want to explain to you how you arrive there, but uh, the rough explanation is uh, make this uh, postulate and uh, substitute that in the system of Hamilton Jacobi equation I wrote before. This system will turn into one single equation. And this one single equation, once you look at it, you will be able to write the infinite dimensional version. And so let me go ahead with the infinite dimensional version.
so naše trilion. Last three and Leon show that uh, if you can solve uh, this problem, then uh, you can write explicitly the that there is a Nash equilibrium. You can write explicitly the, s the equilibrium. So find, given mu a probability density on RD, and uh, this mu corresponds to the ST, which I gave, find W from zero T across the torus. Uh, find the sigma from zero T to the set of probability measure on the torus, such that the following holds. The partial derivative of sigma plus the divergence of sigma gradient P H of S gradient W W equal to zero equal to minus H bar over two Laplacian of sigma. DTU plus H of Q gradient W equal to H bar over two Laplacian of U. And uh, sigma at time T is mu and uh, U at time zero Q mu is uh, U star of Q mu. And this is what is called the mean field game equation. So this is uh, N E infinity. So you can show that if you solve this equation, then uh, explicitly you can construct uh, a Nash equilibrium, W. And uh, on the quite general assumption on uh, F, so I am forgetting something here, plus minus F of Q mu. I, I think. Uh, Sigma t equal to zero. Sigma of t is mu. Hmm? Yes. 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 So it should be plus. Now, the Hamilton Jacobi equation, infinity, is uh, find u 0t cross the set of probability, the to 
three-dimensional torus, the set of probability measure into R, such that the partial derivative of u plus one half plus h of q, gradient q of u plus f of q mu plus a non-local term which depends on the gradient of u with respect to mu the gradient with respect to q u so i need to i have to give a meaning to that how do you differentiate a function with respect to mu equal to 0 and uh, u times 0 is u star So everything else, uh, if you look at all the equations appearing in the mean field game, everything else uh, appear in a very natural way. This was invented by uh, Leon, and uh, I will say that uh, I will give him credit for having an intuition which uh, is not uh, very natural. So his intuition, I mean, he introduced this equation, and then he said, uh, if you can solve this equation, then you can solve everything else. And in fact, you can see how, from the, if you can construct a solution to that equation, you can see that immediately it gives you a solution to that equation. It gives you an approximate solution to the system of uh, hamilton jacobi equation. And uh, this nonlinear operator, this operator NH is non-local. Uh, I am going to write, I am not going to write it now. I am going to write it later. I am missing something. I am missing uh, H bar over Q, Laplace in Q of U. And so the big problem in a mean field game is uh, does this equation has uh, a solution? So if you are not looking for smooth solution, this equation is non-local. We don't know what it means to have a viscosity solution of non-local equation. And so this is already one of the problems. If the solution is not smooth, what do you call a solution? The solution constructed uh, when h is uh, greater than uh, 0. Delary, Lastly, and Lyon, they impose uh, some severe monotonicity condition on f and uh, u star. Mainly, this monotonicity condition guarantees that if you have this Hamilton Jacobi equation, characteristic will not cross, and so you have uh, a long time existence of solution. Under that condition, they can prove that uh, you have. Uh, solution here which are continuously differentiable at least. Now when h equal to zero, <coughs> what I did uh, with uh, NJ switch is uh, we prove existence of solution but for a short time and again we can only construct a solution which are plus C1. And uh, we made a suggestion of uh, what uh, it should mean for a solution not to be on class of C1. It will not be viscosity. It will not be viscosity solution. It will be solution in another weak sense. I'm going to stop here.